Um, this is uh, the last Sunday before school starts, and school starts this week. And the message that the Lord's given me this morning is for everybody, but I'd like for it to uh, maybe in a special way be to them and uh, let them know that I'm praying for them, and I hope that you'll be praying for them as they start in another year of school. A person's life, uh, so much of what they turn out to be in years to come, is determined while they're in high school. And you make a lot of decisions in high school that you may not think are important, and they shape the way your life is going. And if it hadn't been for God reaching down and saving me and changing me, there's no telling where I'd been this morning. When I was these kids' age, when I was in high school, I was living for the devil. I wasn't living for the Lord, didn't get saved until I got that after I got out of high school. And um, I wish now that I had the chance that they have uh, to go and be a witness for the Lord in uh, one of the greatest mission fields in the world. And um, I, I, as I said, the message is for everybody, but I'd like to especially uh, give it to them this morning and let them know that we appreciate it. I, I don't know, if I was a teenager in high school, it would make me feel good to know that I had a church that was praying for me and that there were women in that church if I was a girl that I could talk to with my problems that would help me pray about them wouldn't blab it all over the country and uh, help me out and if I was a young man that I had a pastor or a, a, a godly man in a church that I could go to for counsel and strength one that wouldn't condemn me but one would, would help me through my burdens and problems that'd mean a lot to me I believe if I was a, as a young person in school and I hope that we can be that to them and they've been a lot for a great blessing to us. In Matthew chapter 10, I want you to look at the message here. The Lord was preaching here, and he's telling about his disciples, sending them out to preach the gospel. And I want to use it in type to us this morning, to us as a church, to you as an individual Christian, whether you work. How many of you people here work on a public job? Raise your hand. All right, it's especially for you. And if you're involved with the public or any, you know, relationships in that way, and especially and you that are going to school, that'll be uh, what the message will deal with this morning. Look at Matthew chapter 10 and verse number 16. Matthew chapter 10 and verse number 16. <clears throat> Bible said there, Behold, I send you forth as sheep, as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. The Lord looked at those disciples and he said, I'm going to send you forth as sheep, like a flock of sheep in the midst of a bunch of old hungry, snarling, howling, uh, foaming wolves. And he said, what I want you to do is be smart as a serpent and harmless as a dove. I want to preach to you for just a few minutes this morning on the subject, how sheep ought to behave in wolf country. How sheep ought to behave in wolf country. Let's bow our heads while we pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for the privilege of coming to church. God, we don't deserve it, but we thank you for it. Our Father, this morning we plead the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ over this service right now. I thank you, Lord, for these that are here this morning. I pray the mighty power of God will cleanse the minds and hearts and souls of every individual in this room today. Our Father, we know that I'm unable to do anything without your help. I ask you, Lord, to help me right now that I may be an encouragement and a blessing to these moms and dads and young folks here, Lord, that you would anoint this thy servant and touch these lips of clay that I might be able to preach the Word of God and to do as you said, for us to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. And Lord, do what needs to be done in this service. And we'll praise you and thank you for it in Jesus' name we ask. Amen. How sheep ought to behave in wolf country. Now, the Lord Jesus Christ, when he made this statement, knew what a Christian would face in this world. He knew before we ever got saved and went back out in the world what we were going to run into. And so, he wanted them to be aware of it, 
and how to face it. And the Lord used terms that they understood. That's one thing I like about the preaching of Jesus. He always talked plain enough so that people could understand Him. Now, a preacher ain't doing you no count that talks in such big words that you don't even understand what he's saying. And the Lord always spoke so that people could understand Him. He said, you are going to be just like a sheep in wolf country. I began to study about that, and I began to inquire a little bit about that, and I've preached to you a lot about sheep and the nature of sheep and all that kind of stuff, and I began to study about them wolves a little bit. And I wondered why that the Lord would compare us to a sheep being in wolf territory. And I studied that and found out exactly, or partly exactly, why that He did it. We're a sheep in the midst of wolves. A sheep ain't got much of a chance with a bunch of old hungry wolves after him unless he does two things, wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. Let me say, first of all, this morning, the nature of sheep endangers them. The very nature of a sheep puts them in danger in wolf country. And brother, we're living in wolf country. McDowell High School is wolf country. Not, uh, East Junior High, West Junior High, spiritually speaking, is wolf country. And there's all kinds of hungry, snarling wolves ready to mess up at these young people's lives if they'll let them. I have an idea that a lot of parents have no idea whatsoever that a lot of young, what so young people see and hear at school. I, I'd say probably if there's, uh, and a lot of our kids are not in here this morning, there's probably about 50 upstairs and about uh, 50 or 60 downstairs in the second uh, Sunday school and second children's church. But uh, even with these older ones here that are in here this morning, I'd say that parents have no idea whatsoever the language they hear, the words, the terms, they, the, the actions that they see, the implications that they meet, the temptations that they face, that probably if you parents knew what some of your kids was being subjected to in a public school, you'd probably pitch a dying duck fit. It, well, you'd probably hit the roof. But the devil don't want you to know that. He wants them to be right in there in the midst of wolves where the wolves can devour them. I'd say that a public school is one of the hardest places in the world to live right and stay clean. It's almost like taking a kid and dropping it in a sewer and letting it wall around in there for a while. And when it comes out, say, now you better not smell like that sewer. And you better not have no nasty spots on you. It's not well nigh impossible. You say, well, my kids are good kids. It doesn't matter how clean a rose is. If you drop it in a sewer, it's going to get off on it. I'm telling you this morning, they're in wolf country. They're in wolf country. And the wolves are waiting to devour them. Let me say three things or four about the nature of sheep. First of all, they're typically timid and defenseless. A sheep. You ever seen a sheep? You ever seen pictures of sheep or seen a, a movie about sheep or something like that? They are defenseless. A sheep don't have no way to defend themselves. They're, they don't have a they don't have a sharp horn to stick in somebody. They don't have sharp fangs to bite somebody with their enemy. If somebody just jumps on a sheep and starts cutting it up, they just stand there and take it. A sheep is defenseless. Now we do not have any weapons to fight this world with. The weapons of our warfare, the Bible said, are not carnal. When they go out there and they say, well, look at that, old so-and-so. He's a Christian. Ha, ha, ha. Look at that old dummy over there carrying his Bible. We can't pull out a gun and blow their head off. I mean, we'd like to, but you can't. We don't have no means of protecting ourselves as sheep in the midst of wolves. I mean, I, we can't carry switch blades and slice your throats and all of that stuff. They get to, but we don't. Of course, I wouldn't blame you if you did. I mean, for self-protection. But I'm telling you this morning, a sheep has no way of protecting itself. Not only that, sheep are easily frightened. It don't take much, just a little boo, to scare them and get them all tore up. As a matter of fact, if a grape of, grape of sheep, if a herd of sheep, right, grazing, 
uh, if a grazer sheep are out herding or something other, if they're out here eating a bunch of them, I'm trying to think ahead of myself the reason I do that, and they're out there and they're grazing over uh, a pasture, did you know that a jackrabbit can just jump up all of a sudden and take off running and the whole herd will stampede? About 200 of them just take a running while they trip over rocks, break legs, everything else, just because a rabbit jumped up. They're, they're easily frightened. And we're like that as Christians. We're easily upset and tore up. And some of you kids already. I believe some of you young people, you probably gave up before the first day of school. You thought, boy, I ought to really stand for God this year. But you said, ain't no way. Not in that place. There ain't no... You've already gave up before you give it a good try. You don't know what God might do with you if you'd really get in there and take a stand for Jesus. There's no telling. I told him the teenage girls down there when I was teaching them a few months ago about a girl up in Indiana, around Chicago, who was a decent, good Christian girl. And she was about the only Christian girl in a public high school where she went to school. And they made fun of her. They called her plain Jane, you know, and, and preacher and woman and all this kind of stuff. No tell. Everything they could think of to call her because her life made them feel guilty. Now, they really respected her and they really wanted what she had. But they tried to pull her down, pull her down. People think if they can pull you down and get up on top of you, it'll make them look good. And so they pulled her down, pulled her down, and made fun of her. And all the time, and the rest of the old girls, they just live like the devil. And they let every boy on the football team swap them around, slobber all over them, and pass them around just like the football, you know. I mean, just let them be, themselves be used by them old boys, you know. And I thank God one teenage girl we had here at the church not long ago. And I heard the, uh, heard, uh, uh, that uh, a boy dated her, and she really liked this boy. And he started trying to mess around with it, you know, put his hands on her. And she said, you ain't going to do that to me. And, and he said, well, uh, you don't like me and things. You're not, she said, you're not going to use me for your own satisfaction and, and take advantage of me. And boy, she laid the law down to that old bird. You say, what happened? He broke up with her. You say, that's terrible. No, man, that's wonderful. Because if he'd have really cared about her, he'd have still kept going with her because he loved her, not what he could get off of her. Y'all are awful quiet this morning. I get nervous in a quiet church. Say amen. I'm telling you this morning, brother, she lowered the boom on that old, on that wolf. And boy, I tell you, I can't figure some girls out if a rat come out from under the altar and run down the aisle this morning, they'd scream the roof off that. Ah! Jump up and down, they'll scream at a mouse and climb in a car with a wolf. Crazy, man. I'd stomp the rat and shoot the wolf if I was you. I tell you tonight, this morning, listen, they are easily frightened. Not only that, all those sheep are hanging around together. Sheep like to wander away from the flock. There's something about a sheep. He always thinks the grass is greener on the other side of the fence. How many of you people in here this morning are saved? You're saved. Raise your hand. All right. You can put your hands down. If you raised your hand, you're saved. You are one of God's sheep. That means that you're different from them other kids in the school. There's something inside of you that makes you different from them. You might go along with them and throw out doing something wrong and you're with them. They'll be just front life and don't bother them a bit. But inside of you, something's going, this ain't right, this ain't right, this ain't right, this ain't right. You're a sheep. You've got a sheep's heart. You don't have a wolf's heart no more. You are one of God's sheep. And whether you can get out there and get into something you shouldn't be doing, and there'll be a bell go off inside your soul, and a voice will say, you shouldn't be doing this. What if somebody from the church seen you? What if the Lord come back? You know what that is? That's God showing you you're not like they are. Come out from among them. Be separate. You're not a wolf. You're a sheep. And if you're a sheep, you just might as well learn to live like one. And you know what? The sheep like to wander from the flock. There's no herd of sheep over here feeding. And he starts nibbling and nibbling. And nibbling over this way. He said, there's some good grass. I'll be back over in a minute, boys. Oh, there's enough. Oh, there's some more. And the flock's way over. And he said, I ain't going to leave you. I ain't going to backslide. I'm going over here and get this pretty grass. I'll be right back. And he starts going down there. First thing you know, he's way off out yonder. And the flock's going over in that round curve, down the hill somewhere. And he can't even find them. You know what? He's lost. He's a lost sheep. And you know what? A sheep ain't got no sense of direction. 
They're the dumbest animal in the world. I reckon it's a chicken. I wouldn't doubt they ain't dumber than a chicken. But you know something? A sheep can't find his way back. The shepherd has to come and get him. Did you know something? That's what's going to happen to some of you. Teenagers, young people. Next week's revival. Here we go. This uh, church, church. You know what the wolves out there are going to be doing? They're going to be over here. A wolf in sheep's clothing. Like Little Red Riding Hood. Man, I like that story, Little Red Riding Hood, brother. That'll preach. You know what, really? And Little Red Riding Hood, you know, uh, we used to sing a song about that, and I used to play it on the guitar, and uh, I'm going to keep my sheep suit on, you know, till I'm sure that you've been shown that I can be trusted walking with you alone. Oh! I mean, bad. <laughs> How many of you remember that song? Uh, raise your hand. Lord, I'm getting old, boy. I, that was a popular song, man, on, on the radio one. When, when I was, I don't know, I was about 15, 16, and boy, oh, oh, he'd say, Hey there, little Red Riding Hood. And she's going down to Grandma's house. It was a basket or something, fruit for Grandma. I forgot what it was. She's going to take Grandma some fruit. And about that time, she met a wolf in sheep's clothing. And she said, I ain't supposed to date nobody that ain't a sheep. And he said, I am a sheep. He said, where do you go to church? He said, I don't really go to church. And sure not over there where you go. And she says, I don't know if I can trust you or not. He says, come here, little Red Riding Hood. I forgot how the story really went, but I'll just, I'll just make it up, make it sound better. She said, he says, come here. Wouldn't you like to have some of this? She says, oh, yeah. Oh, I'm not going to leave the, the flock. There's the trouble you can get into. That listen, the the devil will have you involved in so many activities, sports, this, that, the other, this, that, that, the other. He's going to try to pull you away from the flock. There's where you get in trouble. There's where you get in trouble. Now I'm not against school activities as long as they're good and clean and and all of that. But listen, when you start getting out of church, that's where you start getting in trouble. Listen, it's not worth it, kids. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. One of these days, that stuff's going to be over with. One of these days, those things will be forgotten. One of these days, they won't care who's who and who's ain't and who is and who was and who's the best and who's that. Listen, but what you're seeing this morning, an eternal work, this is going to go on forever. It's more important to stand for God and to be wrapped up in everything in the world. At school. When you start getting out of church, that's when you get in trouble. You remember the banana? When it left the bunch, it got skinned. And that's exactly what'll happen to you. The devil skin your hide. Now, back to the story of the girl up in Indiana. You done forgot about that. I about did. All right, listen. The girl up there, she was real. She was a good Christian girl, and she was dedicated. And boy, she, she loved the Lord. And they said, oh, good night. She, she, she won't do this. She won't do that. You know, praise all the time. Ask the blessing on her on her dinner and all this stuff. And you know something? It got, it got time of the year to vote the homecoming queen. And they said, now, boys, who are you going to pick? And they let the boys pick the girl, and the girl pick the boy, and all this stuff. You know, like we used to do that when I was in high school. On uh, we, we got to pick who we wanted. And, you know, they said, the boys got together and they said, what about old so-and-so? And she says, man, that so-and-so. And really called her something awful. And they said, not her. She done this and she done that and she done that. And one of the boys stepped up and said, hey, I know. Let's get plain Jane, the Christian girl. And he kind of mentioned it as a joke. And brother, the rest of them said, yeah, that's a good idea. These old girls over here, they think they're so pretty and so beautiful. And all this, let's just show them. Let's get the Christian girl. She's better looking than they are anyway. There's nothing any prettier than a good Christian girl. She's a lot prettier than them wicked girls. See, them wicked girls, they look all right for a while. But you ever noticed how fast they start getting old? They get old so fast and just swivel up. And just, next thing they do, they look nasty and used. 
and, and wrinkle. But a Christian girl just got a shine on her face when she lives right. And boy, you know what they done? They picked her as a homecoming queen. And brother, that thing was a blessing. And it got a hold of a lot of people in that school. And when they, they had her marked down the street in the parade, and the band was supposed to play a song while she come down the street in the parade, and they wanted to pick an appropriate song, somebody said, how about this? No. How about that? No, it don't fit. And they wound up playing Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound on the band instrument while she rode down the homecoming play. I tell you what, brother, the homecoming queen, thank God that's a champion. That's a champion in God's sight. I was up there preaching in that tent out yonder at Kim Trivet's youth camp. We had about 60 teenagers in there and one girl about 16 years old stood up in the service that night and said, I want to be a champion for God. That was one of the best testimonies I'd ever heard. The sheep has a lot of danger in wolf country. All right, right quickly, we're going to look at the location of the sheep. The location of the sheep are in wolf country. Wolves have territories. And wolves have packs. And wolves run by packs anywhere from 8 to 20 in a pack of wolves, depending on how plentiful the prey is in their territory. Now, I learned that a wolf pack will come in here and they'll mark them off a territory. And the head wolf will go around and will mark off their land. It might be 30 square miles. And they'll leave their scent all across that line. And no other wolves from another pack can cross that line. And they say that if a wolf from another pack crosses that line, then other wolves will jump on him and kill him. Or try to. In a lot of cases. So she, wolves have territories. They have certain areas blocked off that they run and they control. Now you know good and well where the wolf territories are in McDowell County. Wolves run them. Wolves inhabit them. And a sheep is in danger in wolf country. And I'll tell you what, brother, they have these things. And in contrary to sheep, wolves are cunning, they're strong, and they're swift. Wolves are deadly killers. They'll kill anything they can get their teeth in. They have no mercy on any animal, large or small. They only think of themselves. They don't care who they hurt, how much blood they spill. Sometimes they don't even kill because they're hungry. Sometimes they kill just for the fun of it. Wolves don't like sheep to stay alive too long. And the wolves are going to be out to get you, girls and boys. They run in packs to kill. They're chicken by themselves. They always got to have a gang with them. And it, by this coming Friday, you kids right here will see packs of wolves running all over your school. They're always in a gang. Come on, man. Come on. You know, that's real tough. Oh, Lord, showing their fangs, brother. You know how many teeth them things has got? Forty-two. A wolf's got forty-two teeth. Same as the amount of five months in the Great Tribulation. Forty-two teeth. You listening? Their front teeth are small and they pull at the skin and tear the skin. The side teeth cut through the muscles. They got four big fangs up here on the front and the big, back, flat jaw teeth crush bones. Send that old slimy, warm blood and guts and bones down the hatchet to their stomach. They'll eat anything they can catch almost. Wolves hunt any time, day or night. A lot of you parents, you, don't, you think, I ain't going to let my kids get out here and run around on Friday night. Listen, wolves are out on Monday morning. We have, we have a, there's kind of a tradition. Where there's an old, uh, I guess, folklore and stuff. We picture wolves out howling and running around at night, and they do. But they run around in the daytime. They kill any time. And listen, when wolves get together, there are loud howls. They are. They howl when they get together. And when they, when they get together to go kill a sheep, they start swarming around. And one of them will go, oh! And first thing you know, none go, oh! Remember how they go? Sound more like Tarzan than a wolf. 
I'm a little bit hoarse. But anyway, where's Teddy when you need him? Watch it. But now listen. Listen. When the wolves start howling, then they start howling. Listen. You know what? They get together and they start howling. And they turn the volume up. Nowadays, their howls sound like this. The howling. Or it sounds like this. Go Titans! Or, or Spartans or Bugs or whatever the rest of them are. And they all sound like this. And a bunch of wolves get together and start howling. And they said sometimes their howls become very loud. Wolves in parking lots at night. Come in and get out and howl. You say, what will happen to me if I get in with them? They'll ruin your Christian life. They'll tie you to shreds. They'll pick you apart. You say, well, Brother Danny, I want some friends. Well, so do I. Everybody likes friends. You, but listen, you don't need that. A wolf can't make a friend from a sheep. A sheep can't have a wolf for a friend. He'll put on a sheep's face and then eat him when you turn your back. Don't work. Let me tell you this. You know what wolves love to get a hold of? Sick, injured, or slow sheep dragging behind the rest of the flock. Oh, old wolves come along, they say, Hey, there's no sick sheep. And there's no sick old, old, old sick sheep laying on him. And he's laying there like that. And the rest of the flock's way up yonder somewhere. And the wolves say, Hey, that is sick. Got a broke leg. Let's get him. Now that's why we preach to you, young people, to keep sin out of your life. The more sin you've got in your life, the sicker you are. And the more easy a prey you'll be. See, if you keep a little sin in your life and you're doing wrong, that makes you slow. You can't keep up with the rest of the church. Listen, this church is moving. It's constantly advancing and progressing. And if you don't stay up with the flock, You'll lag behind. Did you know what? You can just stay out two or three Sundays and come back and there'll be all kinds of stuff happening you didn't even know about. It's easy to get behind, brother. It's easy to get behind. You can just be sick or in the hospital. Man, you miss great services. You miss people being saved. We might have voted you in as a deacon. You didn't even know it. And doesn't vote you out for not coming. Listen, you better watch that lagging behind and let me say parents. That's who I really ought to be preaching to, I reckon. A person gets to go to church one time a week during school, and that's on Wednesday night. And that Wednesday night service is mighty important that your kids be here. It's more important than their homework, I can tell you that. You say, well, if they don't get their homework, they'll make bad grades. Well, which would you rather do? Them have a bad grade or live for God? I mean, if you'll get them on it when they first come in of the evening, so they start on that homework, have it done, have supper ready, and you wouldn't be so cotton picking lazy. That's, ain't that about it half the time? Ain't it that really you just don't want to go and are using them their homework for an excuse so you can lay out and blame it on them? But I'm telling you that Wednesday night service is mighty important. It's mighty important. It's mighty important. Those kids be in there. A week at school a long time be around a bunch of wolves. That's how wolves behave. They're wicked. Now the Lord's instruction to you is twofold. Number one, you want to do something for God this year at school, kids? Number one, be wise as serpents. Now, I don't know, I believe that's about the only time there in Luke 10 there where the Lord compared Christians to serpents. Usually, when you think of a serpent, you're comparing it to something evil and wicked, standing for the devil. But here, the Lord said, don't live like a, like a snake. Be as smart as one. Don't have the morals of a snake. Don't be low down as a snake. Be as smart as a snake. All right? How smart is a snake? A snake readily, quickly takes sounds, perceives when somebody's coming. Old snake laying on the ground, they can't hear, I don't reckon, regular sounds like this, but they pick up vibes from the ground. And a snake can tell if you come walking down the path and he's laying down in the grass. I seen one the other day. 
I, I didn't tell my wife about this right in our yard. I forgot that on purpose. But I, I was going to tell her about it. But anyway, I was out mowing the grass one day this week, right in front of the house. And I was mowing down through here like this. And about two or three feet ahead of me, a little old snake just went, and boy, I went over here to get a hold of something to hit it, and that thing done gone. I don't know where it got to so fast. But you know what? That snake was laying there in the grass, and it felt the vibrations of that lawnmower motor coming. And he says, danger's coming. I'm skedaddling. And got out of there. You know what would have happened to him if he'd have stayed there? I'd have cut his head off. And saw it, just chopped him up. Now that's what you've got to learn how to do, young people. When you feel the danger approaching, you start picking up them bad. <laughs> Let me tell you something. The devil wants us to live for him this year. That's why he don't want me to preach on this. Last night I got to start preaching about demons and it got plumb spooky in that tent. Well, I guess we need to pray. There's fire flying out of the light pole and light, people blowing horns and all kind of weird things start happening. But did you know something? When you start feeling them vibrations that are not good, you start backing off. You get around some old girl, you girls, and she starts saying, Hey, look at you. You see what I got in my pocket there? They stand in and she starts feeling vibes. Just move on down the hall. Be wise as serpents. What if an old snake says, Why, that lawnmower won't hurt me. I love to feel that good jar poke. <laughs> He'd have been gone, brother. There wouldn't, be nothing, there wouldn't have been nothing left to him. And you know what? That's the same thing that will happen to you. It might not happen that quick. You say, well, I kind of like to run around them boys. It gives me a good feeling and thrill. And they go out, and I know they party and drink a little bit and everything, but as long as I don't do it, it's all right. <coughs> Off going to go your head. You hear me? And you hear me? Well, it won't be long. It'll get you. Car wreck, trouble, it'll get you sooner or later. The way to stay out of trouble is stay away from them wolves. And then, the snake uses eyes. You know what the encyclopedia says? That, no, I read this somewhere else. That a snake's eyes are always open. I didn't know that. I, don't, I still don't know that. That's what they said. Snakes don't blink their eyes. Except when they're asleep. I reckon they close them when they're asleep, don't they? Anybody ever seen one close their eyes? Nobody? They don't. They sleep with their eyes open. Well, anyway, they don't blink them. Their eyes are open all the time. And any of the least little movement or a flash waking up. And kids, that's what you need to do as you go into wolf country. I know the public school system, with all their nice signs all over town and everything, wouldn't appreciate a bit me calling the school wolf country. But that's exactly what it is. Exactly. Exactly. You can't make a pretty building and have a good school. And when they kicked God in the Bible and pushed our Gideon Bibles right here out of our schools in McDowell County, son, she ain't been nothing but trouble since. And the worst is on the way. Watch out. If you're not real careful... snake finds out everything that comes in counter to a snake, he perceives it and catches it. Hey, what about this? What? And he checks it out. I, I think that a snake, when he, when he reaches out there and gets something with his tongue, pulls it back in his mouth and puts it in a little cavity back in his jaw somewhere and it runs a test on it, sends it up to his brain and interprets whether that's good for him or not. And he checks it out before he gets involved in it. Don't just go along with anything and everything and everything that anybody wants you to join and everything. Stop and think about it first. Use your head. And then the last thing the Lord said was, be harmless as a dove. A dove is not out to pick a fight with other birds. You ever seen a dove? You ever paid much attention to a, a dove? Not a pigeon. 
A dove. A dove is not out to argue. Now, kids, that was another trick the devil can pull on you. If you're not careful, you'll go to school with this attitude of, I'm a Christian and I'm better than you are, and you bunch of people, you better, you know, you don't want to go with that attitude. You want to stand for what's right, but you don't want to have a holier-than-thou attitude to them. You don't go into school to argue. You don't talk to a wolf to argue with them about the Bible. And I, I challenge you, refuse to be drawn into an argument. God and the Bible is nothing to argue over. Stand your ground, stand for what's right, stand for what the book says, but don't argue and fuss about it. And not only that, a dove is not interested at all in settling down and having real estate in wolf country. The crowd you run with will largely determine how you live. If you run around with a bunch of people, are you listening to me? And I'm going to hush. If you run around with a bunch of people, please hear me, hear me, hear me. Listen! Listen! If you run around with a bunch of people, you will eventually become like they are. They are. You cannot run around with somebody and sooner or later give in and become like them or they'll give in and become like you. One of the two. You can't keep running around with somebody one of you wanting to go one way and one wanting to live another way. It will not work. If you run around with people that you say, well, I run around with people and they're living in sin, you have already given in. You hide your Christianity when you're around them. You kind of put your Christianity in your pocket but say, yeah, well, let's have a good time. And you're not going to really do anything wrong, but you hide your religion. Why don't you make them hide their lifestyle and go along with you? Pick your friends. Don't let them pick you. You pick them. Don't let them say, hey, you come on over here, you go with us. Just suck along with any crowd that comes along, you know. And Somebody come along and say, hey, won't you go with us? And you say, yeah, come on. And you think, well, i got to have some friends. I'll go with you. Pick your own friends. Pick your own friends. I heard about this girl one time. She was wanting to go somewhere to dance or something like that. And her daddy said, Well, honey, you don't need to be going that. There's bad people. She said, But, Daddy, I'm not going to be doing what they're doing. I'm just going to go enjoy myself and have a good time. And he said, Honey, could you go over there and pick up one of them coals off the hearth? And she said, Yeah. She went over there, picked up a, a coal off the hearth, and stood up and said, Now, see there, Daddy? It didn't burn me. It was cold. Put it back down. And he said, Now, look at your hand. And she looked at her hand, and it was black. He said, see there? Bad company. It'll smut you every time. It'll smut you every time. You may not get burnt. You may not get in a lot of trouble. But hanging out with bad company will dirty you. It'll dirty you. Every time. How a sheep ought to behave in wolf country. And I would to God that he'd just put his hand on just these six rows of teenagers, young people here this morning, and every one of them would say, by the grace of God, I want to be a good sheep in wolf country. Let's stand with our heads bowed. And I'll tell you what I want you to do. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Every head bowed, every eye closed. You may have rededicated your life 5,000 times. And I want you to forget about that right now. And I think some young people here this morning ought to make some decisions. Before school starts this morning, you ought to make some decisions. What are you going to do? You're just going to go along, let them take you like a piece of clay and make you any way they want to make you? Are you going to dare to be different? I challenge you this morning. How about some parents here? Maybe some parents. And by the grace of God, I'm going to help my child this year to live like a sheep ought to live in wolf country. Dear God in heaven, I pray the Holy Spirit of God will come do what needs to be done in this invitation. Right now, in Jesus' name. While every head is bowed and every eye closed, piano plays softly. 
you want to step out and say, by the grace of God, I want to live like a good sheep in wolf country. Just come to the altar. Just come on right now. We're going to pray before we... That's right. Come on, girls. Thank the Lord. Others. Others may need to come. You say, Brother Danny, it's hard. Yeah, I know that. I know it. I, I feel for you. But the reason it's so hard is because God can bless you so much for doing it. Is there another? Someone else. Someone else. Just want to slip out of your seat and say, Brother Danny, I want to be a good sheep in wolf country this year. By the grace of God, I'm going to take a definite stand and I'm going to stand there. Like it or not. If I'm popular, all right. If I ain't all right. I want to take a stand for Jesus. Stand there. Would you come? Would you come? Brother John, you sing that first verse of that hymn. Maybe there's a mom. Maybe there's a dad here this morning. God's been dealing with your heart. You have long for sweet You want sweet peace? peace? Young people, do you want God to bless your life? Come on right now. Come on. Come on. Put it on the altar. Put it on the altar. Come on. Let Jesus do work in your life. Have Amen. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Somebody else. On the is Somebody else. Why? Why better John sing? Christians pray. Yes, you're all on the altar of sacrifice laid. Your heart. Come on. Let God do away in your heart. God do what your soul is going. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Somebody else. Somebody else. Go ahead and sing another verse. Our brother John sings another verse. You need to come. Come on right now.